Today, I'm in New York City to take a first look at the newest version of a Land Rover Icon. It's actually not the Defender, which has had our collective attention for the last few years. Today, it's all about the Range Rover. Before we get deep into the new Range Rover, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Motor One US channel. We have new content going up every week and we wouldn't want you to miss anything. So the 2022 Range Rover, believe it or not, this is only the fifth generation vehicle for this car in the United States. It doesn't change very often, so when they make changes, they really go through, and despite this car looking pretty similar to the one that's currently on the road, a lot about it is different. There's new powertrains, there's new tech options, there's even an all-electric version coming in 2024, and of course, we'll get through all of that. But for right now, let's start with the design walk around. So let's break this thing down section by section, starting with the front, which is where I think this looks the most like the car that's currently on sale. The headlights are pretty similar. Uh, the biggest differentiator is going to be this new lower bumper, which sort of stretches the entire width of the car. This is the moment where I'm gonna put the grinning emoji on the screen, because that's what I see when I see it. But this is a Range Rover, so there will be plenty of different ways that you can have this dressed up. There's gonna be a black package that will blacken out the grill here and blacken out the lower section. There's gonna be different designs. You can actually do different colors on the word mark as well. So a million different ways you can dress this thing up. This is the first edition that we're looking at here. So you're gonna have the choice of a long wheelbase, which is going to be eight inches longer than what you see here. And there's actually gonna be a seven seat configuration for the first time in the US. All that is later on. Let's focus on the design changes because this is where you start to see the things that they've tweaked and the things that they've improved. But what they haven't done is gone and put in a ton of different body lines. The whole thing is very simple, it's very reduced, and that's the look they were going for. And again, depending on how you uh, spec the car, this will be done in different colors. Regardless, the mirrors are going to be black, and a lot of this will be a black accent piece. There's three main body lines to check out with this car. We have a nice, huge cut that runs the entire length of the vehicle. The roof line is obviously very important and super iconic. And then what they have tweaked is down below, this sort of sweeps up the back of the car and that looks much different than the current car. These are 23 inch wheels. It's crazy the way this thing is squatted down in the proportions. They don't even look that big, but 23s are gonna be the biggest wheel option. The smallest you'll be able to get are 20 inch wheels. Here we have new flush door handles, which will go flat into the bodywork. We saw those first on the Velar. They look very nice. And other than that, it's just a little bit more fresh and a little bit more modern than before. This will immediately be the view that everybody recognizes this as a new car. They've really done some nice changes to make this completely distinct as a new model. The taillights might be my favorite design feature on the entire vehicle. When the car is off and it has no power, this is completely black, and the designers were telling me that these are actually the most powerful LED taillights in the world. They had to make them incredibly bright uh, to shine through the black piece like this. It looks really elegant. Uh, I love the way that these are vertical. I see a good bit of Rolls-Royce Cullinan from the rear three-quarter angle. I don't know if that's just me, but this is a lot more sort of squared off and upright in its stance than the previous Range Rover. But what you do retain is the split folding tailgate. And now they've actually made it more functional before. Like I mentioned earlier, you can get a seven seat option. It still has the air suspension, so you can squat the car when you're loading groceries and make it easier to get in and out of. But for the first time, they've included a bench option so you pull these out and you get that all set up with the backrest here and you can completely make it like a little picnic situation you even have cup holders over here the only thing they didn't add is a bottle opener but that would be a cool accessory so this being a Range Rover of course everything is covered in very very nice materials and Land Rover did a big giant presentation where they showed us all the new wood grains and the new leathers and uh, it looks fantastic as you would expect from this type of vehicle we're getting accustomed now with cars like the Grand Wagoneer and others where we're putting screens all over the place. We're doing additional passenger displays, splitting this up into multiple displays. Range Rover actually took the opposite approach. They reduced the number of screens, at least in front of the driver. This is a lot better down here where you control the fan speed, the heated seats, things like that. Uh, there's just some touch capacitive buttons here and then two physical knobs. 
There are two 13-inch-ish displays in front of the driver. This is an all-new digital instrument cluster. It looks very bright, very clear. And this is the latest generation of the Pivi Pro infotainment system. It's running a demo mode right now, so I can't actually control anything. Um, but this is gonna be faster than before. It's gonna be uh, over-the-air updates as well. And this is gonna have standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Let's go on a very quick walk around of the Range Rover SV. So this is a couple of things. This is the long wheelbase. This has the best back seat package you can get. And basically the car next to me is gonna compete with the GLS Maybach. It is the absolute top, top, top of the model range you can get. You can see immediately the spec on this one is all copper. So the Range Rover is done in copper. There's some copper surrounding the front grille. And then come alongside because we have these absolutely gorgeous 23 inch wheels with copper inlays. I love that they did that. People would look at this and say, man, this is completely garish and very brash compared to the first car we looked at. Um, but this is obviously going to appeal to some Range Rover customers that want their cars very loud. Speaking of really loud, you can get a copper roof to match and make the whole spec just a little bit brighter and more in your face. Then we get to the absolute best part the back seat. You hop in, you have eight additional inches of legroom over the standard wheelbase model. You have displays in front of you here, and all of this right now, because the car is not on, we can't control it, but it's all going to be sort of like robotic or motorized. So this tray table pops out, it comes all the way up here, and it's shared between the two back passengers. You have a pillow, and then of course you have just unbelievable materials all over the inside of this SV model. There's even this leather trim that extends basically all the way out uh, as a passenger. If you look really closely in the wood, you can see these little triangle details as well. They really just took their time and tried to make this as special as possible. So it's neat to see how much of a departure this is from the standard wheelbase model and just how many customers this car has to cater to. The 2022 Range Rover goes on sale in the spring of next year, and it has a starting price, at least for now, of $104,000. To get all the latest information on this car and every new car we review, head over to MotorOne.com. Thanks for watching.